you're the mayor of Karachi. Um, your party is in power in the province and it's also part of the federal coalition. Uh, it, it wouldn't be wrong to say that you're the most powerful mayor that the city has seen ever. Um, and it's come at a time when the city is, going, is say, facing multiple challenges from water to transportation, um, sanitation, beverage. The list is basically endless. So what is on your priority list? Priority list is pretty big, but let me just uh, start off by saying that I'm not the first person who's had this uh, privilege. When Mustafa Kamal was uh, the Nazim of Karachi, uh, his political party was in Karachi, was in Sin, and was in uh, the federal government. The then military dictator, General Musharraf, was completely uh, backing uh, his uh, government here in Karachi. Same goes for Mr. Nehmatullah Khan, uh, who was uh, the Nazim back in 2001. Let's say in the democratic setup. I would say uh, Mustafa Kamal and Nehmatullah both were democratically elected. But, uh, so I'm not the first person, but yes, uh, I'm fortunate that I don't have, uh, uh, or I, I'm, 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 let's put it this way, I'm not, I don't have anything to blame, or anyone to blame now. Uh, I will not have any scapegoat if, God forbid, I'm unable to perform. So I have uh, a big bucket list to work on, to perform. And unlike others, I will not be able to pass on the burden or shift the burden or the blame to anyone else. The priority is uh, addressing the water needs of uh, the city of Karachi, uh, addressing the severage issues, improving uh, the overall infrastructure of the city. Uh, the public transport needs to be improved. Uh, last but not the least, uh, improvement in public spaces, parks, playgrounds. Uh, that's the five priority areas in terms of development. Uh, but one more thing where I'd like to work on is um, giving importance to KMC and making it or transforming it into an organization which is self-reliant, which is not dependent on other organizations for its funds. Every mayor that comes in keeps, uh, keeps talking about how he doesn't have power all over all of Karachi, which is something that you're gonna face as well. So how do you, do you have a plan to sort through that? You see, um, naturally there are multiple stakeholders in the city. Uh, I'll, ha I'll have to work with everyone and I would try my best to endeavour in such a manner where we can all coexist and work in a coherent manner. Karachi is very different in the sense that Karachi has uh, areas which, uh, which are in the control of KMC, which are in the control of the towns, the 25 towns which have now come into being. Uh, Karachi has uh, federally controlled cantonment areas, Karachi has uh, cooperative societies, Karachi has port areas. So there are multiple organizations and agencies which are operating. But at the end of the day, uh, they are somehow connected with uh, uh, the administration of Karachi. So I think uh, somebody has to play a proactive role in reaching out to all of those entities, have a level of proper coordination so that we can all converge together uh, to find uh, sustainable solutions. You're talking about coexisting, but politics and division that we're seeing in Karachi. The recent local government elections, we saw MQM boycotted. People's Party got 150 plus votes. Jamaat Islami got 130 plus votes. Um, PTI also got about 60, 70 votes. Karachi is a diverse city. It has a diverse political mandate. We're not seeing the coexistence that you're talking about. We see Jamaat Islami going, uh, challenging your appointment as the mayor. How is this coexistence going, going to uh, be implemented? You see, one of the most unfortunate aspects about our great city is this politically diverse situation or politically polarized situation. Unlike Lahore, where the same set of people ruled Lahore for about 30, 35 years, they were in power in Lahore, they were in power in Punjab, they were in power uh, in the federal government, and all the three tiers of government worked together and we see uh, Lahore uh, improve over the last uh, few decades. Unfortunately, that never happened in Karachi. MQM had its own uh, strengths and weaknesses. Jamaat Islami had its own uh, strengths and weaknesses. People's Party had its own strengths and weaknesses. PTI then also uh, came in. 
So that's been a major problem for us because if let's say MQM is in power, Jamaat Islami would crib. If People's Party is in power, MQM Jamaat Islami would criticize. If PTI is in power, uh, Jamaat Islami or People's Party would criticize. And that's why the first statement that I made uh, when I was nominated as the mayor for Karachi by my political party, and I said that if I get elected, I would like to work on bringing people together. I'd like to work on a charter of Karachi to to develop a master plan for the next. 50 years for the city of uh, Karachi. So I have offered this olive branch uh, to all political stakeholders. I'd like to reach out to them. I'd like to engage with them constructively so that we can all work together for the betterment of our people. Secondly, uh, another reason why we should all work together is out of the 25 towns that Karachi has, uh, People's Party has a certain number of towns, Jamaat Islami has a certain number of towns, and PTI has a certain number of towns. So if the three political parties, they don't engage with each other, they don't work with each other, it will be a problem. So it's in the fittest of things that we should all coexist, work together, right? We should have different political ideas, political manifestos, but at the end of the day, whether it's my political party, whether it's Jamaat Islami or PTI, or even MQM or other uh, parties which are not uh, in the council, they all want betterment of Karachi. So I'm saying, I'm not asking Jamaat Islami to support People's Party. I'm not asking Jamaat Islami to join People's Party. All I'm saying is that let's all work together for the cause of Karachi, for the sake of the people of Karachi. And um, if uh, for that purpose, I have to reach out to them, uh, even personally, I've done it through uh, press conferences, through statements. If I have to personally reach out to them, I'll be more than happy and willing to even go to their offices and make this request of working together. I can do it anytime. You'll, you'll, you'll see that happen. Whether they agree with it or not, yeah. that's, uh, uh, that will not deter me from reaching out to them. I will certainly reach out to them. Okay, because it kind of see, seems a little bit impossible in the current scenario where Jamaat Islam is already alleging that your appointment is rigging itself. They can say whatever they want. Uh, it's their right to criticize me. I have decided and I made the statement that I will not respond to criticism. I will respond through work, through constructive development. So I'm going to focus on work and uh, let the people of Karachi uh, judge my performance. But uh, what's the worst case scenario? I reach out to them, they say no, no problem. Okay, uh, we, in a pre previous interview with Don is English, you talked about how Karachi is underrepresented. The latest census basically puts Karachi at about 18 million, 18.7 million. That again, experts say, is very much undercounted. And yet, we don't see anyone other than MQM or Jamaat Islami talking about this. So what you, because you've said it that this is a problem and this will be a problem. Population is how you know a, a city gets its money. Uh, so how do you plan on taking this up within your party? It's a very unfair question that you've asked, with greatest respect. I, 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 I term it to be an unfair question, why? Because People's Party has just not agitated on media. It has officially agitated about the census. Starting from 2017, when the controversial census was done, it was the People's Party government here in the province of Sindh which agitated and said, we do not agree with undercounting our people. The protest, came on record when Imran Khan was Prime Minister and the Council of Common Interest meeting was called and uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan had constituted a committee uh, which was headed by Ali Zaidi who was from Karachi which had Mr. Aminul Haq who was from Karachi who had Dr. Femida Mirza who was from the province of Sindh right? and all of these three people recommended the approval of that controversial census of 2017 so people who call themselves the real advocates of the city of Karachi, they actually played a direct role, facilitated in the approval of those controversial senses. On the other hand, the Pakistan People's Party as a political party and the government of Sindh, through the chief minister, dissented with the decision of the Council of Common Interest. That's on record. If you want, I can share the copy of that document with you. Then the constitution provides a remedy to anyone who's aggrieved uh, with the result. Uh, and that is by way of um, uh, filing a representation to the joint session of the parliament. The government of Sindh, for the first time, it was a provincial government that reached out to the parliament to address this grievance. The matter went to the floor of the parliament probably in 2021 November. 
Senator Taj Heather was there along with the entire parliamentary party. He again agitated, he protested that you cannot undercount our people, but despite all our protests, uh, they approved this controversial census. Then came, comes in the new census. From day one, the Chief Minister had been advocating the cause of the people of Sindh. He had been telling the federal government that the way and manner you are executing this process is incorrect, it will lead to controversy. Unfortunately, even though they are uh, coalition partners of Pakistan They're People's Party. Partner. Yes, but they P did not. PP was out of the coalition, it's, it's gone. Yes, and, and, and if, if you remember, in March or April 23, Mr. Bilawal Bhutto Zardari addressed a meeting in which he said, and it was publicly done, that if they do not count our people properly, I will leave the coalition. So What's we st stopping him from leaving the coalition? The, the count has not been announced as yet. We, we will agitate the cause of our province. We do not want our province or our cities to be undercounted. So when the matter comes to the Council of Common Interest, we will agitate. Let me be absolutely clear about it. We absolutely disagree with the census of 2017 and we have serious reservations with regards to the way and manner the current census has been undertaken. So we've done it politically, we've done it administratively, we've done it legally. Other political parties have only sat at Regal Job or they've sat at Press Club, raised slogans and actually facilitated the uh, controversial census in the past. Uh, we have two questions now um, from the Don staff. The number one question is, it's Eid ul Adha. Um, why are the roads dug up right before Eid? The roads have not been dug up uh, just before Eid. Uh, if you're talking about DHA... No, I'm talking about all over Karachi. I think uh, if you look at the city in entirety, uh, I think not a major portion of the city is dug up. There are certain areas we are working on uh, establishing, developing new stormwater drains, especially in the area of North Nazmabad, District Central, certain areas of District East where development work is being carried out. But apart from that, uh, we are not digging up roads. We are on the other hand, we've started a process of rehabilitating those roads and as we speak, uh, work is being carried out in various areas of the city. So, um, are the, is the road situation going to get better before the monsoon hits? Uh, the target is to completely uh, finish the storm water drains before the monsoon you know, uh, season comes and uh, it needs to be decided whether road carpeting will take place before the monsoon or after the monsoon, but we'll certainly make the roads uh, more trouble. Okay, thank you so much.